taking a peek at the steering wheel for the vehicle. So it's pretty straightforward, but there are still quite a few things to consider for this vehicle. So let's kind of go through different options that are available. Starting off, we've got our pad on the left-hand side. We've got a voice command prompt, which is going to let us do things like change songs, radio stations, things like that using our voice. You can see it go crazy on that screen there. We've got a mode button there, so we can push that in order to be able to adjust between our active presets and things like that. We have the flexibility through the media screen to be able to adjust those settings out. Check down the description below for that walk around instead. We've got another unique button that we can create to kind of do what we'd like it to do. We've got some flexibility there. We can answer or hang up on a phone call. We can increase or decrease the volume. We can push out in the middle to mute. And then we can go up and down in order to go between different presets as well. Along the right hand side, we've got another option, a few different options in order to go between different pages inside of that cluster screen. But I honestly, I love the look of it. Now, this thing does have two different looks. This is the nighttime look, but we would have a bright white look if we're locked into the daytime mode instead, or if we have it switch out automatically for us. But get moving forward, so we do have our little button there in order to get through individual pages. So we've got our main page there with our intention level. We can push OK if we want to in order to reset that out. Pushing again brings us back to our basic charge, which we can push and hold OK in order to reset all of this. Moving back, we've got our compass. If we had maps going, we would also have our navigation options coming up through the screen there. And we would have to drive in order to see our current tire pressure. Now what we're doing is going up and down between our different screens there as we go. We've got our button there, ah, Smart Cruise. So this is the Smart Cruise button. So we actually have to be driving in order to be able to turn it on, but we turn the system on. Once we get to our ideal speed, we're just gonna press either plus or minus. So we're gonna go either up or down there in order to set our speed. So the Smart Cruise is an amazing one because what's going to happen is if we come up to a, well, if we're following a vehicle, they start slowing down. Your vehicle will automatically start slowing down. If they brake, yours will come to a stop. If they pick up speed, change lanes, yours will pick back up to your set speed again. We've got a distance indicator. So how close or how far are we away from the vehicle that's in front of us? And then we've also got our lane follow assist. So this is an amazing system. I always recommend keeping it turned on. So what's gonna happen is if you start to lose attention for a second, it's gonna keep you fully balanced in your lane. Not fully self-driving, but pretty dang close all at the same time. So it is an amazing system from that perspective. And like I said, we can easily kind of go up and down between different settings here, which is kind of neat. So as you can see, we've got our main settings. We drop down to go to these sub settings. So we press and hold OK. And that jumps us into a series of other options, as you saw there on that screen. So that adjusts a few other things out as well. And we push this button again in order to go back to that main screen. And like I said, so we've got our lane centering system. We've got our follow. So how close or how far are we away from the vehicle in front of us? We do need to have that lane, uh, that smart cruise control on in order for that to work. But you will so start to notice what's so going to be up or down in order to figure out how close or how far are we away from the vehicle in front of us. But pretty straightforward. Quick little horn test. Oh, that sounds kind of nice. And off to the left side, so we do have our different drive modes. So we've got our eco versus normal versus sport mode. We can also press and hold the drive mode button there in order to get to our snow mode. But honestly, I personally recommend keeping it in the sport mode if you're a little bit of a lead foot. I mean, this is an EV, so you've got a crazy amount of torque, but inside of that mode, it is absolutely amazing. And from there, so this isn't a rotary dial, it's just a button press to change out modes. Now, a few other things. We are going to be a manual telescoping steering wheel, so we can go in and out, up and down as necessary. Just gonna keep it in a lower position for a second because we've got a series of different sticks that you can see there. Stick on the left-hand side is gonna let us adjust what's going on with our lights. I always just recommend keeping to the auto setting. We can flash out our high beams there if we want to. And then the stick along the right-hand side is gonna be for our windshield wipers, so we can easily adjust there as necessary. We can select what speed we're currently going to, and then all we're gonna do is pull in towards us for that front windshield wiper if we want to have it going very, very easily. And then you can just kind of make this stick out here. Let me drop it for you a little bit. Actually, before I get to that stick, I'm going to show you the paddle shifters. So we have two little paddle shifters there, but what I wanna do, I'm actually gonna to have to shift into drive for this to happen. So we're gonna go into drive, and watch this. So. You can see there we're jumping between different regen modes. So we've got our base zero mode. We've got one versus two versus three. Once we're in three, we push it one more time. That enters what's known as I pedal mode. And that's going to be our one pedal driving. So rather than having to worry about the gas brake, you're literally just worrying about the one pedal in order to be able to accelerate. You take your foot off the gas and it's automatically gonna decelerate the vehicle fairly rapidly as well. So it's all tied into that regen braking system. We can turn it off very simply by pressing over again. So in order to enter it on, this, on the left-hand side, we just kind of adjust as necessary there. You get to the max one more time in order to turn it on. 
stick on the right in order to, or the pedal, um, paddle shift, I should say, on the right hand side in order to turn it off. So it's that simple to be able to use the paddle shifters inside of the vehicle. And I promise, so let's move down a tiny little bit. And crazy sock day today, ha ha ha. All right, so stick on the right hand side, series of options available. We do have our drive, shift down for neutral, bigger shift in order to get into reverse. And then on the very tip of the stick there, we also do have a little button. We're gonna push that in order to drop the vehicle down into park. So we go up, so up two for drive, down one for neutral, big down for reverse. So it is a very smart system there. So you can't accidentally trigger reverse or whatever the case may be accidentally. But very, very straightforward in order to use that. And that was a look at the steering wheel and the cluster screen inside of the 2022 Hyundai Ioniq.